there's no value for Muslims anymore. You know when they kill us, they don't even use a bullet anymore. Because the bullet's too expensive. Our blood is cheap. Don't waste a bullet on a Muslim. Wherever you look, indignity is smashed upon us. And when people do call for revivalism, they are terrorists. What is terrorism? What is freedom of speech? The Sharia teaches you that you to gain your rights. To live under the banner of Al-Islam. That is the biggest thorn at the moment in our da'wah. Is hadood Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How should the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be implemented? That's the biggest debate that exists amongst us. Because many of us in our hearts are following the da'wah of modernization. That can the hadood of Allah be implemented in the 21st century? Is it possible? Is it really applicable in Western society today? That the Sharia will come? Will it come? People of Sunnah say that will it come? How will it come? Huwa alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa dinil haq liyudhirahu ala dini kulli walau kari al mushrikun he is the one who sent his messenger with huda, with guidance and the right deen to prevail over all other ways of life. If you don't believe that in your heart, you've already lost. You have already lost. You don't believe that in your heart that Islam is going to be victorious. Islam will always be victorious. People will not be victorious. Kalimatullahi al ulya. The word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always be supreme. And if you go away from the message of Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a new form of people who will love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love them. And it's indignity which has been thrown upon so many of these people. The only way these people come out of this indignity or how they alleviate themselves and unfortunately many Muslims have begun to do this as well is through the concept of suicide. You know, you think dunya gives you great things. The Scandinavian countries the highest annual income in the whole world. The average wage in this country at the time when I was researching some 18,000 pounds a year. The average wage in the Scandinavian countries is 36,000 pounds a year. The highest standard of living, of commodities, blonde hair, blue eyed, yet the highest rate of suicide exists in this country. And even this country, 5,755 people committed suicide in the year 2003. And these people boast this is the lowest number since 1973. So they talk about freedom of life and the so-called quote-unquote great United States of America. There's a famous Arab proverb, fix your own home before you fix someone else's home. They enter Muslim land and say, we've come there to alleviate you, give you freedom, give you democracy, give you a way of life. Go home and rectify your own home. More than 30,000 people in United States of America commit suicide on an annual basis. And they say that's a moderate number. You know, Bush talks about a way of life. Got to give the people in Iraq liberation. Got to take this shabab out of what they're doing. Look at your own shabab. One in three American teenagers have contemplated committing suicide. One in three 
in your own country. You've got nothing to give us. And you talk about freedom of life when you're suffering these problems in your own land. Every 17 minutes, someone commits suicide in the United States. Every 17 minutes. And so far, probably three or four people whilst I've been lecturing have committed suicide. And they've come in to alleviate Muslims. You want to give us something? What is there that you can give Muslims? What is there that you can give us? Give us a better road? That road is only developed for your own purpose. al dhahabul aswad The black gold. And you know what the black gold is? All of these wars is not a war on terror. It's a war on possession of Muslim property. Many of us are sleeping. Don't get into siyasa. Don't get into politics. Don't get involved in this. Wake up and begin to understand world politics or what is happening in the Muslim globe at the moment. They don't mind you sitting here making dhikr. They don't mind you reading salah. They don't mind you even memorizing the Quran as long as you don't understand the Quran. As long as you don't call towards the Quran and the implementation of the Quran. So do as much of that as you want. Because your da'wah will just become like the Sufiya. But when you believe in a real struggle in raising your people and in raising the Sharia, then you become dangerous. We are all fundamentals. Because we all believe in the return of the Sharia. And the return of the Sharia will give them peace and tranquility. And I've said this many times. I'm not a dreamer and I don't dream. But history has testified when the Sharia was implemented, non-Muslims lived under our rule better than the way you treat them today. That's a fact. You call us anti-Semitic. You say you hate Al-Yahud. Billahi alaykum. That when Jews were persecuted, where did they run to? They fled to Al-Andalus. They fled to Al-Maghrib, where the Jewish community still lives there today. We did not kill six million Jews. We didn't kill them. You're the ones that got blood in your hands. You have to apologize to them. We don't have to apologize to no one. We did not take down the Twin Towers. You yourselves took them down. So in your disguise and war and terror, you will kill your own people because you don't care about them. If there's anybody that does care about humanity, then that is maqasidu sharia. Read it in great detail. The purpose of the sharia is hifdul insan, is preservation of humanity. That's what Islam will give them. We will preserve Muslims and non-Muslims. And if somebody commits atrocity, who is living under the Sharia, and a person has given the jizya, that is paradise for them on this world. That if Muslim commits atrocity towards them, the Sharia says, you have to take the side of the non-Muslim. That's what our deen says. So we're not against no one. The only thing that we want is the coming back of paradise on this world once again. For both Muslims and non-Muslims at the same time.